불멸의 전사 투. Yeah, it's a bit of a top, uh, not top, a toss up. Uh, a top and hat. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, like my fedora. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, I'll, when I'm when we were doing the predictions in the in our group chat, I was. Mm. Deliberating whether to go for Super or for Ragnarok, and I've decided to go for Ragnarok simply because, as I mentioned at the start of the broadcast, it feels like Ragnarok's one of those players that has a larger array of strategies to use in the Pro League format. Yeah, I mean, we just haven't really seen too much out of Super. He did play a really nice best of one up against Innovation, but again, different map, different matchup, right? I'm very curious to see where his PVZ is at nowadays. Kind of an interesting one out here in Korea that in terms of this matchup, kind of going both ways at times. Zerg's looking pretty strong with the with the uh, you know the Ling Baneling kind of style nowadays, and the Infestors, of course. But Protoss is pushing back. You know, they're adding some storms and some Archons as well. So I, I really want to see how Super plays the matchup himself. And if Ragnarok can stand up to Super here, uh, I feel like this is a very even match. And I feel like that's why the predictions are very even. I think it's like four to three today. For sure. I, th I feel like these two players are very even in skill level mm. uh, when we consider all the factors that they have, their macro, micro, strategy, you know, that pentagram. Star that quality, Star quality. Right? <laughs> that, that pentagram that Trust we were talking about. Trustworthiness, right? Trust, yeah, they both are uh, medium trust, I guess. But, yeah. Uh, uh, we we'll have to see how well Super reacts because they are 2 1 down. Ragnarok doesn't really have that much pressure on him because if he loses, they can take him to the ace match. Yeah. Where, uh, look, looking at the quality of both the ace players of both teams, you want to favor CJ in this case. So, yeah. Hey, yeah, we'll you send out Hero there and uh, be pretty happy about it. I'm glad you mentioned that because Ragnarok, definitely a younger player. I mean, he's been around for a while, but. Uh, definitely still young, doesn't have like the huge amount of experience on the bigger stages. Uh, I, I feel like he'll definitely feel some comfort in this situation up against Super. Also another guy who's been around for a while. Uh, Super. Well, let's take a look at the predictions here. Four to three, as I said. Me, Wolf, and Chase are going for Super. The rest of you going for Ragnarok. This is going to be a very even match, guys. Game number four, Super versus Ragnarok on Overgrowth. Here in the top right, in the purple, from the Afrika Freaks, the Protoss player, it is Super. And spawning here at the bottom left as the Yellow Zerg for CJ Antis, it is Ragnarok. Ragnarok, looking very poised here. Rocking the, uh, what's that, dark purple or black earbuds? So not joining the CJ hype train here. The multicolored family of CJ yeah. earbuds. <laughs> Generally, you want to use something that's comfortable to yourself. <laughs> I mean, I use these red earbuds because they fit well in my ears. Generally, the uh, the big ones, you know what I mean? Like the the things that you got to like shove into oh, your so ear not, canals. Not, not, not the in ear the in ears you're talking about? Or? Oh, they go in ear, but they're smaller. Ah, uh, okay. I, I like those ones. I, they're like I, I shaped a, I have to a the pair. Ear. Yeah, I have a pair of in ears, which I love. I love in ears. I mean, when we're traveling on the subway or the bus, it's always good to isolate yourself from uh, the noise oh, of, course, of yeah. uh, soul life, I guess. For sure. It can get uh, a bit bustly, right? Yeah. In the big city, right, GTR? Yeah. Uh, where are you from in uh, in Australia, by Sydney. the way? Sydney. Sydney? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you, you must know what like big city life is like then. Well, uh, must... Sydney's not really that big of a city compared to Seoul. When I came to Seoul, I was like, whoa. And then I went to Japan over the winter holidays, like, whoa, Tokyo. <laughs> so <laughs> it's been yeah. a big difference between Tokyo and Seoul. But Seoul, I guess, is a mega city that I'm like, still, I'm still getting used to. Yeah. To is Sydney. Sydney very condensed? Like New no, York City it's very or? spread out. Okay. I mean, let's say uh, from here to maybe uh, you know Bundang. Uh huh. Yeah, <laughs> that like we consider Bundang still part of Sydney, so. Okay. Yeah, it's not that we're like a satellite suburb or something like that. All that right. makes sense. Uh, that makes I, sense I, I, I to mean, me. GTR, maybe not to some guys out there who don't know what Bundang is, but Ooh, it's okay. I think those are the uh, CJ rookies that I mentioned before that look like it. Yeah. They've got that uh, crown. Dog with crown, <laughs> Dog right? Dog with crown <laughs> against. It. Well, I don't know who sponsors the Africa uniforms. Is it Nike? Nike? I'm not. A, I'm not 100 percent sure. Uh, we could. We could ask. We can ask Legend. Yeah, when you see him next time. Yeah. But uh, we got another two gate build coming out. Oh no, 
No, we don't. Never mind. Just erase that from your mind. Pretend I did not say that. It's okay. We got a one gate build with the Chrono Boosted Adept coming out here with the follow up of a Stargate. Yeah. All stock standard here from Super. As we see, the build from Ragnarok is pretty standard as well. Is actually going for the Speedlings, the Queens, the expansion. Nothing crazy from both players. It's going to be just a straight up game for now. Overgrowth uh, generally did lead to these kinds of games in the past when we did see this a lot. If you guys weren't following Pro League last year, uh, just generally, it was one of the most standard maps that we could have. Uh, always very standard games. It was very Macri. You just expand the, along the bottom or the top, depending on your position, of course. We're going to have the two extra gates added here. And it's going to be a Oracle first. Yeah, but Ragnarok sends that Overlord straight into the main base of Super and completely scouts those two extra gateways. So he can obviously adapt to what he thinks that Super is doing, as we don't see any additional gas on the expansion of Super, so it might be a mineral-based composition coming here from Super. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what the transition is here. He's got two Adepts out for now, just poking out with them, really just not going too far outside of his base. Oh, uh, okay. We see the Roach Warren come down for Ragnarok, and we didn't really see Roaches in the previous PvZ, so... Good to see a change of pace here in terms of the Zerg vs. Protoss meta. Coming here from Ragnarok as the Oracle is scooting towards the expansion of Ragnarok. Yeah. See how much damage you can do. This is very interesting the way he set up his defense. Two queens at the natural, one queen and a spore in the main. I mean, as you were saying, the Overlord went in there and scouted it when it was in its infancy, right when we were seeing the Oracle being birthed right from the Stargate. And uh, he knew this all along. He saw the, the the Oracle coming across the map with his two links. He's got control of both of the watchtowers. He's in total control of this game. I mean, the third base is kind of late, but he does have this interesting timing with the Lair and Burrow here for uh, speed. Yeah, it seems that uh, Ragnarok is sacrificing that quick third base in, t in exchange to get in that earlier Lair, getting those uh, Galar reconstitution upgrades onto those Roaches. But we see here Super actually doing quite a bit of damage on his drones. Actually, six drones go down. Seven drones, actually, from Super. Nice exchange there from him as he moves out with his Adepts to that Watchtower. Yeah, and I, I love the follow-up, too, of the Void Ray. He knows what Ragnarok is doing. He's scouted no third base, and he sees the Roach Warren uh, with his original pass by. So he's like, okay, I, I see what you're doing here, and I am going to prepare. And... Uh, He's actually taking the gold base now, bringing us back to the old uh, 2015 days. Lee Knox back in the booth here. Well, he did break those rocks really early on, so that pathway to that gold base is uh, much more accessible for Ragnarok as he does take that gold base. But taking that gold base allows you to set up that creep there at the uh, top of the ramp, allows you to take the fourth and fifth bases a bit easier because you've got that... Uh, area to work with in terms of uh, having that gold base. Mm -hmm. I'm just kind of worried that he won't be able to defend at that third base, the gold base, because it's so close to super. He can easily clear this watchtower, and unless Ragnarok has the units ready to go on the defense, it's kind of going to be a little bit worrisome for me. He does have Burrow right now, but no Burrow movement. And he's only got 10 roaches and already two voideries out on the map. He's got three sentries too. Can definitely do some work with that. He's swinging by once again with these oracles and even threatening at this third with the void ray. Yeah, this uh, void ray play is very cute from Super. You can just harass at that third base, force those queens there to attack that void ray. But the gold base does go up and oh, we see a counter attack here at the third base. And there's also a drop at the main base. Let's see how well Super deals with this. It looks like there's five roaches in there, but an immediate pull by Super. He is right on top of that, scouts it with the pylon, misses the force oh, fields there. He could have caught every single unit over there yeah. if he was on top of that. Going to try to come back here with the uh, with the void rays, but he has to rely on his oracles for vision for now. There's one observer coming out here. And note the fact that Ragnarok has actually split his roaches there and borrowed them all because he knows that oracles are the only source of detection for Super at the current moment, so... For, oh, okay, the first Observer's out as I say that, but um, uh, if he knew that there weren't any Observer's out for uh, Super, splitting those Roaches is a good idea because it forces more... Oh boy. Uh, 
tags from the Zarkles, but Zarkles just doesn't damage on these. There's drones. no spar in here. The, the second queen was out of position, so immediately eight drones at the gold get demolished oh. there. And he, he could follow up here. He's got a giant army with a lot of energy on those sentries. We do have some Hydras coming out, but he just made 10 drones. Yeah, where's the static defense here from Ragnarok? If there's a few spine crawlers on this uh, ramp, it could help a lot with this defense here. But as you said, 10 drones were being built from those lava, and set drones is definitely not what Ragnarok wants right now. He needs a unit to defend this. This is what I was worried about at this base. You can just sit down here on the low ground. He already has the air units for vision. He doesn't even need that observer. So he's just sitting here de denying mining. He's not committing to anything. He's not losing anything by doing this, Ooh. as long as he doesn't take damage from those corrosive biles. He's just doing his own damage and, you know, getting the upgrades out back at home. He's getting immortals out on the map, getting plus two, getting charge. Yeah, every time that Ragnarok casts those corrosive biles there onto the low, low ground, Super can just rock back forth and then rock back in and then take out the units one by one. And oh, Ragnarok here, his army's tagged, so he has no, nowhere really to hide. Yeah, look at this. Now Super is just straight up fighting. It, using that uh, alignment on these Void Rays now. Really nice force fields getting so many kills on these drones and the units. Uh, I mean, Super's in a really nice position so far. He's uh, stopping the mining there at the third base, the gold base. His own third base is up and running quite comfortably. And if Ragnarok, I don't think Ragnarok has the income to deal with this. I mean, look at the supply count as well. Like once these upgrades hit for Super, it's going to be really hard for Ragnarok to deal with this. Yeah, for sure. He may be able to snipe a Void right here, but Super turns around and goes for the attack. I think oh, that's, yeah, that's a big better. mistake. Taking a lot of damage from the Corrosive Biles and the Hydras there. Yeah, I'm not really sure why Super decided to swing there to the ramp. I feel like if he just sat here at the, uh, at the below the gold base minerals, he can just disrupt the mining yeah. and keep force fielding. But it looks like, okay, so he's going to remain here, but we'll see if Super can actually get out. Well, it looks like he's going to commit to the fight right now. Some corrosive Biles do come down, but not getting the damage they need. And the, and the Immortals are so protected back there. And meanwhile, Super's taking a fourth base. He's getting so far ahead of Ragnarok with this pressure. He did overcommit earlier on, but he's just non-stop with this pressure. Oh, some roaches actually sneak into the back line of uh, <laughs> Super's third base there. And actually, oh, Super's moving his old army back, so this could give Ragnarok the opportunity to go down to that lower ground and try and set up a nice concave in the case that Super decides to move out again. Yeah, he's only got two observers here, and that's a bit of a mistake. When you see that burrow, you need more cannons, more observers, more defensive units. Oh, it snipes the oracles as well, so that means there's no tagging on the army of Ragnarok, and it looks like Ragnarok's just trying to posture to go for an attack, or... Not sure if this is really going to work. That's no. a really, really big Protoss army. He's trying to get the biggest surround of all time, the biggest concave, but half of his units aren't even fighting here. Yeah, he needs to move those units there. He doesn't want to hit that Nexus. He wants to attack this main army of Super, but there is still a nice concave here working for Ragnarok, but it's just not enough. There's a nice force field there. It takes out some roaches, and the Oracle, just 27 kills on it. It's ridiculous. <laughs> 11 more there at the gold base. These, these players, you were talking about how they're kind of even in skill, and we're seeing that. You know, both of them seem a little bit flustered at times, like Super bringing his entire army back to deal with two roaches. Ragnarok, he moves out with his army, and then he takes 11 drones and damage at his gold base, his only third right now. Still hasn't produced a spore there. He's really not focusing on his defense. And once again, as we saw before in the uh, mid-game, He's just sitting there at the bottom of the map, or not the map, but uh, below the gold gold minerals and just chipping away those drones. And Ragnarok is only just taking his fourth right now. I feel like uh, composition at Super has just dealt with his gold base so well. Yeah, it's an interesting move where he does pull some more of those roads just to guide, try to go for some harass, but it seems like Super finally does split his units a little bit better this time, and he's going to go for the attack here. Look at how many Immortals are in this composition. He's also got plus three compared to the plus two of Ragnarok. He keeps blinking forward here just to try to kill this army. Yeah, I think this might be the nail in the coffin for Ragnarok. I mean, his main army is being... Yeah, there GG. It is. GG. Super's going to take the game and force that ace match for, for Afrika versus CJ Antis. What nice, a game yeah, that was. Nicely played there from Super. I love the Void Ray to harass at that third base that Ragnarok's taking. I also love how well 
he controlled those oracles. I mean, at the end, he had, what, maybe 28, 29 kills on those oracles. It was ridiculous. Yeah, There's I mean, nothing that Ragnarok could do about it. It, it was, I like the idea to go for double oracle because he only showed one, right? But then he hit the second one and then he went into the main where he assumed there would be less defense. So he starts off there, gets seven kills. And then later on, I mean, Ragnarok, he, he didn't even put up a spore at his at his third. Like, it, it, it was kind of hard because Super was constantly harassing, right? And he was sniping. I think he made maybe one spore, but it got sniped and he just never remade it. And that's because the army, that's, that's what you get for taking that risk of going for that gold base at that point in the game. Yeah, it felt like Ragnarok had that in his mind that if he got his Roach Warren up earlier, excuse me, getting that lair up earlier for the speed, he could probably defend that third base, but... We saw there, using those air units, Super getting vision of that upper ground of the gold base of Ragnarok, was able to harass the mineral line. As we see here, we are going into our ace match. What are your predictions for this? I think well, CJ will be definitely bringing out Hero. Yeah, that's the easy one there. But who do you bring out as a Freaka? Who can actually go up against Hero at this point? I mean, curious, I may have said before seeing that game, yeah. but now I'm like, no. No, not him, not Bomber. Maybe okay. alive? They've, de they've done it before, but they, it seems like they didn't bring him today, right? They only have four oh, players today. Oh, they only played the today. four players. Yeah, that's right. So, I, I'm, I'm not really sure. I, I think with the four players they don't have today, you'll probably be curious then. I guess, but he's already had so much trouble as we saw in that first game. It'll be a different map, right? I'm not 100% sure with the map here. Anyway, we've done enough analytics. Let's see who it's going to be. For Afrika versus CJ Antis in the ace match, it's Bomber versus Bomber. Hero. Oh, Bomber, that's a very bold move there from Legend and Afrika Freaks. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see whether the gamble pays off. I mean, you want to really back it past, you'd associate Bomber to be the ace player for the team, but considering his form right now, it's a mm. bit of a questionable move, but I'm pretty sure that yeah. the Freak Freaks and Legend have a lot of faith in what he can provide in this match. Yep. This is interesting. I mean, Bomber's been having trouble in TVT. We'll see what he can do in a TVP up against Hero after a 10-minute break before we get into that ace match. So stay tuned, guys. We'll be right back.